Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the last day of class. Um, so uh, Wednesday I did a Gaba group example where I got a group of permutations of three elements. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another one because I don't know <clears throat> it's fun. Uh, so you can see how the fundamental theorem works. So let's do. Let's look at this extension. One of our favorite ones. <clears throat> so um, the extension when you add the square root of two and the square root of three to the rationals. Uh, so what what is the Galois group and what are the subgroups and what are the um, what are the fields corresponding to those subgroups? So um, we already know we know a lot of things about this extension because I always use it as an example. For example, I know that I know a basis for it, um, which is one root two root three root six. So, um, <clears throat> okay, let's see. We're gonna find the Galois group using the strategy I was using. I was using on Wednesday, which is you you add a root of the same minimum polynomial, and and that way and that way you know automatically you have an automorphism. So you have the identity of Q, actually. Of the identity of Q root two, that is definitely an automorphism of this field. And now what you can do is you're attaching root three to this field. So what you could do is send root three to negative root three. So uh, you get um, let's call this sigma. You get an automorphism that sends root two to root two, since it's the identity on the field containing root two, and it's not the identity on root three, but rather it sends it sends it to the other root. So, sigma exists um, because negative root three have the same minimal polynomial. Okay, so um, so that's one element of the Galois group. If you do sigma squared, you get the identity because the negative root three is gonna go to positive root three. So sigma squared of root three is by definition, sigma of root three is negative root three. And then by being an automorphism, that minus sign comes out. <clears throat> and sigma of root three, once again, is negative root three. And well, sigma of root six being the product, since root six is the product of root two and root three, uh, it's also the it's also itself. It's also root six, <clears throat> and uh, we can do the same thing. Where three and the roles of three and two are interchange. So you're sending root three to root three and root two to negative root two. And I'm gonna call this tau. <clears throat> so, um, and for the same reason, tau squared is the identity. 
So, um, I'm gonna. I, I like doing diagrams of these of these groups. So I have these numbers that generate the the extension. And what I'm saying is that the one I'm calling sigma keeps roots two in place and interchanges the roots of three. And what I'm calling tau interchanges the roots of two and keeps the roots of three in place. So um, if you follow these arrows, uh, <clears throat> what happens when I do tau and then sigma? Well, um, what happens is that tau interchanges the roots of two and sigma doesn't do anything. So the roots of two get interchanged and tau doesn't do anything to the roots of three, but sigma interchanges them. So they both get interchanged. And you can see that this is the same, that the other doesn't matter. So um, what we have is this group. Also, uh, when you do this twice, you get the identity. I guess it makes sense because they commute. These four elements are in the Galois group of this extension. And actually, um, and these, these are all the elements. Um, uh, the reason, more or less, um, is that if an automorphism fixes the rationals, the root of two and the root of two, the three, it must, it must fix everything. Again, by the uniqueness part of the, the theorem I'm using all the time, which is that when you add uh, two roots of the same polynomial to, to any, any field or to any field isomorphism, you can extend the isomorphism uniquely. So, you can apply the theorem to the identity and get an interesting uh, statement, which is that there's only one automorphism that does that. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so I don't know how many groups you remember. I don't know if you remember that there's two groups of further four. Um, But two groups with four elements. Uh, the integers mod four and the integers mod two twice. In this case, the integers mod, mod four has an element um, that when you that has order four. So an element whose square, so one is in here, and if you do one plus one, it's two, which is not zero. But in this group, Everything, everything squares to the identity. So, uh, what I'm looking for uh, is Z2 cross Z2, which is often called the, the Klein group. I have no idea what Klein did to the to this group to put, put his name on it, but here we are. It's a group of symmetries of a rectangle. Um, which makes me think that these things act like if I put, if I draw a rectangle and put the, and put the roots on the, and label the roots, uh, the sides with the roots, then reflection this way is sigma. Reflection this way is tau. And sigma tau is 180 degree rotation. Okay. Um, 
so um, let's look at the the, at the theorem of the law. We have um, uh, I have the, the client group. And it has a trivial group. And here are, here are all the subgroups. Um, there's only four elements. So uh, not much to check. So for example, I can take the, the group generated by sigma. And that's a group because sigma squared is the identity. I can take the group generated by tau. I can take the group generated by sigma tau. And then just notice that, well, these have order two. When you when you have two of these elements that are not the identity, you, you also have the third. If you have sigma and tau, you must have sigma tau. So there's nothing more in here. So um, so now the theorem of Galois theory says that I should find that this should correspond to the fields in between. Uh, to extension. So the the largest group should correspond to the smallest field. And now there should be three fields in between. So what corresponds to one sigma? These are um, let's see. I mean you can probably figure it out, but I think I gave this I gave you this name with the upper script. These are the elements in the field that are fixed by sigma. <clears throat> so sigma, oh, which one was sigma? Sigma either change the roots of three and fix the roots of two. So definitely the square root of two is here and the square root of three is not. So what I, you could write this out carefully, but the field corresponding to uh, the field that, that sigma fixes is exactly the field generated by root two. And this is a, a, a degree two extension. So this is the index of the subgroup. This is um, the degree of the extension. And this is also the degree to extension. So now what is fixed by tau? It's, it's exactly the same. What's fixed by tau is the root of three. And what is fixed by sigma tau? Um, so maybe you can figure out what group is missing here. So if I, if I use sigma tau to both the square root of two and the square root of three, I get the opposite. So um, what happens is that if I multiply them together, the root of six is gonna be fixed. And that is what I'm finding in here, Q root of six. <clears throat> and and now I know that there there are no other fields in here because um, because of the theorem because there are no other subgroups in here. <clears throat> All right. So let's look at another. So the book has an example of a of an extension we call a group B four, which is a group of symmetries of a square. If you remember, um, where am I? It's a really interesting. I really like this example um, because he has a because the group of symmetries of a square. A square has four reflections, right? So that gives you four subgroups of of order two. It gives you one that has to do with the one eighty degree rotation, and then he has. Uh, four subgroups of uh, three subgroups of in this two, and they all correspond to a field. And 
it turns out if you add root four, the fourth root of two and i to the rationals, you get the total great picture. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a different example. So there's um, there's three groups. Three groups. Wait, there's two. Wow. Oof, I'm feeling terrible today. Oh my god, my brain is not working. Um, yeah, there's there's only two uh, non-commutative groups of order four. Uh, for their aid. Oh my god, groups of for their aid. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> oof. there's um, there's two groups of further of, of further eight that are not commutative, and then there's then there's a bunch of commutative ones that Z eight, Z four times Z two, and Z two times Z two times Z two. I have no idea what any of these is. Well some I guess. Um, so I'm gonna show you an example where you get the quaternion group, which is the other possible thing. Um, you might have seen the quaternion group in, I don't know, maybe in physics class, but anyway, it's just a group of order eight with three symbols that we like to call I, J, K. And then it has another symbol called negative one. Um, and the square of the generators is negative one and the product of I, J is K. <clears throat> anyway, we'll see how this shows up. So what I'm going what I'm going to do is look at the extension. It's an extension of the the previous one I had before, um, and then I'm going to add something something more. I'm going to add an element that I'm going to call alpha. Alpha is going to be the square root of two plus root two times three plus root three. Okay, so this example, is what we're going to look at. So, um, of course, if, if, when we look at the Galois group, we're going to have to look at where the root two and root three go, and, and we know what's going to happen to them. They're going to go to plus minus themselves, and then where alpha goes, and alpha is going to have to go if you well to its opposite or to its um, to well to some other um, some other root of its minimal polynomial, and this one has degree eight over over q. So that's how we're looking at the minimal polynomial. Um, I'm not going to factor it out, but this is what it is. Oh, and copy and paste in here. So there's definitely the thing about, well, the thing about the Galois group is I just know I'm going to apply all the symmetries to these elements. And and I'm going to get a, a polynomial with rational coefficients. I could start doing, you know, I mean, it's clearly a polynomial in x squared because this is a square root of something. So I could figure it out, but also eh, not going to. <clears throat> so uh, what you do is replace root two by negative root two. Replace root three by negative root three. So these are all just the same, but there's a sign. There's there's well the three signs there, and I just uh, keep changing them all. Why am I writing it out? <laughs> I should just write plus minus.
and so I change the root of two, I change the root of three, and then in the last step, I change both. Um, All right, so the thing is, you can very well multiply this out and see that it has uh, rational coefficients. And actually, I'm about to do that. All right, so it's x to the, so that's a minimal polynomial without the square root. So if I want the square root, I want I need to have x to the six in there. Uh, so, uh, I need to replace x by x squared. All right. So, um, the thing is, um, so the first thing I should prove is that I can I can send alpha to any of these roots. Um, this could go wrong if if they're not in the same field. But the thing is, I've, I've figured that out before. Um, the thing is, this root, um, we can just we can just find them. You have alpha, you have negative alpha, they're in the, in the same order. This root is alpha times the square root of two minus one. This one is negative that. Well, they all come in pairs, right? This one is alpha times root, times root of three minus one divided by root two. And this one is the opposite. And this one you multiply by the, by both things. You can just square these numbers and see that you get uh, that you get the correct um, the the they are the square roots of what I'm saying. So you have um, they're all in the field uh, because I can get them by using the square square root of two, square root of three, alpha itself, and field operations. So this, I mean, this is definitely a big coincidence. Um, normally you add a root of a polynomial, you don't expect to add them all at once. Um, but this is a carefully chosen example. So um, so let's find the, the stuff in the Galois group. So, um, there's one very obvious element. Um, you can take the square root of two and the square root of three, I mean, other than the identity, and, and do nothing to them. And then you're adding alpha. And what you can do is send alpha to negative alpha because they both have the same minimum polynomial over over q root two root three, um, namely x squared minus two plus root two, three plus root three. Notice that <clears throat> the minimum polynomial depends on what field you're looking at. Um, this extension has degree two. So the minimum polynomial has degree two. I'm just adding one square root. If I look at the way over Q, then I have four times two. So that gives me a degree eight polynomial. 
So, um, <clears throat> well, there's there's one, which I, I'm actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call it negative one. And alpha, I'm also, I'm also calling alpha one. Um, so, okay, so now we gotta look for more interesting things, things to do. So for example, I could <clears throat> send root two to negative root two, send root three to itself. And I know that this is uh, an automorphism. I already did the Galois group of this extension. And now, how can I extend this to, to this larger field that I'm interested in? Well, I need to send alpha, alpha one, which has minimal polynomial x squared minus two plus root two, three plus root three to something with minimal polynomial uh, I mean, it has to be quote unquote the same, but that it's only the same if this is the identity. So what you need to do is make this automorphism act on the Galois group. So root of two is going to go to negative root of two. So now actually I get a different minimal polynomial. So for example, I can send alpha one to uh, this root I'm calling alpha two, um, which was alpha one times root of two minus one. All right. So, so that's, um, I mean, that gives me some element. I'm gonna call it I. So, right, let's find here something thought about this element. When I do it to root two, I get negative root two. When I do it to root three, I get root three. When I do it to alpha one, I get alpha one times root two minus one. So for example, I can figure what happens when I do it to alpha, alpha two, which is alpha one times root two minus one. So what happens, um, I'm also figuring out what happens to um, to this thing that I'm calling I when I do it twice. What, how do I call it capital I so it doesn't look like a complex number? I um, is, an, is a, a group, of, uh, a field homomorphism. So it's going to commute with the product. So I only need to do I to each of the factors. And I've written above what you get for each of them. This one gets sent to alpha one root two minus one. And then the root of two gets sent to negative root two. So where this is, what I'm getting here is a negative alpha one. And if I do I to negative alpha one, of course I'm gonna get negative I of alpha one, which is alpha two. <clears throat> All right, and if I, I'm just gonna tell you what I get if I do if I do it to alpha three, I'm going to get alpha four. So, um, I'm trying to, put them all in a shape where I can draw arrows. So what I is doing is sending alpha one to alpha two, alpha two to negative alpha one, Um, negative alpha one to negative alpha two, and then back 
delta three goes to all the plug four, and this goes like that. So this is I. So um, I'm not gonna um, I'm not I'm not gonna do a million computations just to warn you, but I can also find find J um, this way. Before I said that I would uh, fix root three and move root root two, so I'm gonna do it the other way around. J fixes uh, root two and moves root three. So now alpha one is gonna have to go to alpha three uh, because alpha because the minimal polynomial of alpha one is gonna correspond to the minimal polynomial of alpha three uh, under under uh, what I'm doing here. And then um, what I have is that J sends alpha one to alpha three to negative alpha one to negative alpha three. And it sends alpha two to alpha four to negative alpha two to negative alpha four. And then back again, of course. Um, okay, so this was J, and I'm, I promise you that when I do these two together, they generate the group, so I don't really need anything more. Um, alpha 3 goes to alpha 4, goes to negative alpha 3. So, um, okay. So notice, so one thing I notice is that when you do I squared and J squared, what you do is you, well, you take two steps here. Alpha one goes to negative alpha one, alpha two goes to negative alpha two, alpha three goes to negative alpha three, alpha four goes to negative alpha four. So that's, um, that, that's why I was calling negative one before where you fix everything, uh, all the roots of two and three, and then alpha one, oh my God. I just wrote the identity there. The square root goes to the opposite square root of the same number. Um, and the same goes for i. When you when you take two steps in this chain, you what you get is an, a negative sign. Which is not to say that I'm multiplying everything by negative one. Definitely the number three is not multiplied by negative one. It's just that, or the number root two, it's just that, that these four are multiplied by negative one. And so what do I know about ij? So ij, unsurprisingly, I'm gonna call k. So that's what, that's what I get when I do j and then I do i. When I do ij, what happens um, is that I have alpha one, alpha one goes to alpha three, and then I'm supposed to do i. So i sends alpha three to alpha four. Now alpha four by j goes to negative alpha two, which by i goes to alpha one. That can't be right. Oh my god. Ah, okay. Um, let me pause for a second and find the mistake. All right, found it. <clears throat> it was down here. All right. So alpha one uh, by ij alpha one is not going to go to alpha four. 
is going to go to negative alpha four. You because j sends i to uh, alpha one to alpha three, and i sends alpha three to negative alpha four, which in turn, in turn, uh, when I do alpha four, sorry, do negative alpha four by j, go to alpha two, and alpha two by i goes to negative alpha one, and and you can guess how this goes. Alpha three, alpha two, it goes to first alpha four and then alpha three, uh, negative alpha two, negative alpha three. So <clears throat> also if you do k squared, you get negative one. And, oh, I forgot to, delete my computations but who cares you can figure it out by yourself or not i mean i'm doing it so you don't have to what happens when you do i j k when you do well that, that's it you do i j k i j is k so you're doing k squared so you're doing negative one so these are um these are all the relations in the quaternion group. So if you if you take these relations, you can figure out that the Galois group uh, it has plus minus one plus minus i plus minus j plus minus k, uh, negative one commutes with everything and when you do all of these, you get negative one. <clears throat> so that tells you how to multiply everything by everything. For example, well, j, k is gonna be i, chi, k, i is gonna be J, K, J is going to be negative I. So for example, if you do I then J, you go the other way around. You have, you go alpha one goes to alpha two, and then alpha two goes to alpha four. So you have this except for a plus sign. Anyway, um, that's the quaternion group. Um, and also, if you sort of forget the plus minuses, so, What you have is that plus minus one sends root two and root three to themselves. Plus minus i flips root two, but doesn't flip root three. Plus minus j flips root two, uh, sorry, uh, fixes root two and flips root three, and k flips both. Um, so sort of what happens when you forget the plus minus when you take the quotient group. Um, you, you take, basically you take negative one to the identity. What you're doing is your this is the same this is the same as taking the Galois group of this extension and then restricting to the Galois group of the extension I was looking at the beginning where you just um, only look at the action of the smaller field. So what I'm saying is, if you just look at what happens to root two and root three, um, negative one doesn't do anything. 
and i and negative phi both do the same thing as sigma was doing before, which is flipping the root of two. And uh, you can you know you can Google the subgroups of of this group, the quaternion group. Um, but I mean, really. <clears throat> You pretty much know them already. So you have the group plus minus one. Of course, that's a, that's a subgroup. And then if you if you want to have a group that contains i, it's also going to contain plus minus i because that's i cubed. And if you and the same goes for j and k. And that's actually that's all of them. So. Um, this tells you what the subfields of this extension are, but there's not really, there's nothing we haven't already talked about. Because the subgroups, the top part in here corresponds to fields contained in, in the extension I was looking at before. So the computation is all the same. Now, and th well, that includes the, the trivial group. And corresponding to this trivial group, you have the whole extension. But I guess now we know that there aren't any more. All right. Uh, so I found a group. Um, I found a group that had, uh, well, I found, I found, I mean, I found on the internet, um, an extension that has a Gala group Q8. Um, so here's a question for you. Is every group, um, It's every group like all group. So if you give me, you know, I don't know how many groups you know, but it gives me a group. Can I find an extension that has that as a as a field uh, as a say all group, like the group of symmetries of a hexagon, or you know a tetrahedron, or I don't know whatever. So the answer to that question is that no one knows and. Um, you would be you would become very very famous if you solve this. Um, this is I think this is one of those problems that not only people have no clue how to do, but I think no one has any hope of solving this in the near future. So it would be incredible uh, to see the answer to this. I think the answer is believed to be yes. Um. Um. Okay, so I mean, I should say I should say just a sentence. Um, Galois theory. The reason it was invented uh, is to show that the equations, the, the equation of the degree five. has no uh, formula. So you all know the quadratic formula. Um, whatever. You know the quadratic formula um, and you might know that if you take a cubic equation there is a formula. Uh, it's complicated, um, but, but it's there. And if you take a quartic equation, there's also a formula. I mean, nobody writes it down because, but you know, there's a recipe to prove it, and you could make it into a formula if you were okay with the formula taking up one page. Um, but if you want to solve an equation of degree five. 
Um, well, I mean, for, for hundreds of years, people were trying to find the formula. And, and using Galois theory, understanding the difference between the Galois groups of this group and this group, uh, the Galois groups of, of these two polynomials, you can, you can conclude that there's a fundamental difference that kicks in in degree five and, uh, and just makes it impossible for there to be a formula. So that's, I mean, that's the big victory of Galois theory. Um, how do you, like, because without it, how would you, it's, it's just, it seems amazing to me that you would be able to show that no formula can exist. Also, why would no formula can ex exist? I mean, I think no one expected this to be true, uh, but it is. There's even, there's even polynomials over the rationals whose solutions you can't write as a bunch of roots. Um, because a formula, I mean, for something with field operations and roots. And the, the reason that you should be studying Galois groups is that whenever you have a square root of two, you, you have a plus minus, a square root, you have a plus minus. Whenever you have a cubic root, you get to say, I get to choose which cubic root. And when you have a fourth root, well, you have four to choose from. And that means that some Galois groups can appear because the Galois group is basically understanding the choices you have when you make this solution, right? So in this example from before, the roots came from moving these three signs around in a specific way. Um, taking a collection of pluses or minuses um, tells you um, is, is what the Gala group basically is. <clears throat> So if you have uh, a group, a, a polynomial whose roots can be interchanged sort of in a way that's too complicated. Um, oh my God, I feel so bad. Um, then you can, you, can show, you can show that uh, there's no formula. There's no way the roots could be written in such a simple way with all your roots. Right, and that's all for the year. Oh, see you next time. Goodbye.